Thanks, Stefan. So we've talked to you a little bit now about uh, quantifying our greenhouse gas emissions through the inventory work that we're doing. We're going to move now on to um, so a couple of mitigation topics. So the next speaker is Suzanne Rowe. She's based at our Invermay campus. She's a senior scientist in the Animal um, Sciences Group, and she's going to be talking about um, low methane emitting ruminants. Yep, so... Um Hello, um, I'm based in the Animal Genomics Department uh, down at Invermay in Dunedin and we're really interested in strategies that involve breeding, whether there's individual variation between animals in, in methane emission that we can actually select upon. We can exploit those differences and, and breed a new generation of animals that, that emit less methane. So the, the rumen evolved around 50 million years ago. Um, it's, a, it's a symbiotic system and the ruminant provides a a warm, safe, anaerobic environment. And in that environment, we have, we have microbes. And those microbes basically break down cell walls. They, they break down indigestible parts of plants that, that the animal could not use for energy in any other way. This is a fermentation process. So the food comes into the rumen. It's broken down by the microbes. And in that fermentation process, um, energy sources are produced for the animal. So these are what we call volatile fatty acids. And at the same time, there, there are byproducts. And one of the main byproducts is, is hydrogen. And there's another specialist niche, the methanogens. They take up that hydrogen, they combine it with carbon, and they produce methane. And that methane is, is emitted, erupted, or, or belched out by the animal. Um, and that's the methane that, that we see in the atmosphere. So um, as, as, as people have alluded to already, um, Methane produces more or makes up around 44% of New Zealand's greenhouse gases. But actually, ruminant methane makes up 31% of New Zealand's greenhouse gases. So about 75 to 80% of the methane is coming from ruminant livestock. Um, and we are very unique because globally that figure is probably only around 5%. So given that it's a physiological process um, and we know that you know that um, it's it's evolved over time. There are host genetic factors acting on it. We set about looking to see if we could see whether it was actually heritable, whether we could breed for low methane. And and a man called John McEwen, uh, probably around 10 years ago now, went out and measured progeny test flocks across the nation, uh, beef and lamb funded test flocks and the reason he did that is because those test flocks are directly related to the whole of the national flock and he screened 1300 sheep through respiration chambers like the one that Stefan showed you so that that was a really really big task but what he did over those three or four years was select at the top bottom the top and bottom 10 percent um, of sheep that for for methane emissions so we ended up with two lines we ended up with a low methane line and a high methane line and they, they were around 4% apart when, when those lines were, were started. And it's 100 ewes per line. And each year, the highs are bred to the highs and the lows are bred to the, the lows in the, in the hope that we get divergence. And that's certainly what we've seen. Over the last few years, we've seen complete divergence between those lines. We now have high-emitting sheep and low-emitting sheep that graze in exactly the same pastures. They're, they're, they're run together. And depending on um, how we measure, we're seeing 9 to 11% differences between those lines. So what we've done is successfully bred low-emitting sheep that are 11% lower than their, their counterparts. And our job now, or, or our job over the last few years, has been to say, OK, we have this low-emitting sheep. Does she fit into the New Zealand system? How does she behave? Is she productive? Is she healthy? And is this something that we could roll out to the commercial flock? So one of the first things we did was, given that respiration chambers are a false environment and, and we feed a pelleted feed, we wanted to go back into the respiration chambers but now feed uh, cut pasture. So just to check whether the differences that we see on a, on a pelleted feed were the same on pasture. And indeed, we, we ran some young rams for a whole year and we measured them on different feeds in different systems. And the absolute amount of methane will, will differ with, with what you feed an animal. But in actual fact, the difference between the lines didn't. That remained consistent. When we looked at the physiology of the animals, we see that they are actually different. So that the low methane animal has a rumen that's roughly around 20% smaller than a high methane counterpart. The, me the, the rumen is, is smaller but it has more, papi more papillae and they're denser. So actually there's a different structure in the gut. So we see the same surface area, but we see a different physiology. 
And when we look at the, the actual microbes, those microbial populations that are residing in the rumens, they're, they're also different. So the low methane animal has a different combination of microbes that make up that community in her gut than the high methane animal. And this in turn leads to different outflow, different proportions of the, the energy sources that we see. So the low methane animal actually has less acetate, uh, more propionate, and, and a different, different energy profile, different sources for her energy than a high methane counterpart. And we, we actually see this in, in product. We see more wool from the, from the low methane animal and slightly less fat, and that's because she's, she's producing less acetate to, to create that fat. So we now know that we can breed a low methane animal. We're happy that she's productive, that she's healthy, that, that she fits the system, and that she's low methane on pasture at any time of the year. The next thing is, how can we roll this out to farms? How can, how can we make an impact at farm level? How can a farmer select his own low methane sheep? Um, and, and so the first, the first step to this is to find a way to measure a lot of animals, high throughput, in, in, a, in a way that's low cost. And these are portable accumulation chambers. The idea was actually um, first put out in, in Australia, and we have engineers at Lincoln that um, actually designed our own version. <coughs> um, excuse me. So these are simple aluminium chambers, and all we do is, is bring a sheep in off pasture. She stood off pasture for about an hour, so uh, she's ruminating at, at the right time. We pop her into one of these, and she's there for about 45 minutes. Um, we have a, a monitor that's the same monitor as you would take down a mine. We take three methane measures, one at the start, one at the middle and one at the end, and then she's released back out into the pasture. Um, we take another measure two weeks later, and we've actually found that doing this is just as effective as measuring one in a respiration chamber, and it gives us a ran ranking for that animal for the rest of her life. So she ranks the same, and, and we've measured animals you know, through, through, through their life. She ranks the same throughout her life. So we now have a one-hour measure that ranks animals for us. Now, that's all, all very well in, 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 a, in a shed on an agro-search research farm, but how do, how do we take that out to the nation. And what we've actually done is mounted these uh, chambers onto a trailer. There are 12 units on this trailer. Um, give it a wave if you see it go past you on the motorway. Um, and we can take this out to farms and we can measure um, animals on breeders' property. Now, we're not going to go to every property and measure everybody's animals. That's also impractical. But what we can do is measure enough of the nation's sheep that we can then have a genomic prediction value, a genomic test that will predict methane. And that means that when a farmer gets his breeding values for, for production, uh, he can also get a, a breeding value for methane. So he can make that decision. He can, he can weigh up all his traits and he can say, if these rams are the same for production, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose the low methane. And we had a workshop with um, breeders and farmers only last week, and um, yep, they're, they're very happy to go in that direction. So just to summarize, first of all, we confirm that methane emissions is a heritable trait. Um, there's, there's a physiological underpinning. It can be passed on to the next generation. We've seen no detrimental side effects to date in these extreme lines. In fact, we, we've only seen advantages. It's a small difference. There's a potential for lowered absolute emissions of about a half to 1% per year in the national flock. But that's permanent, and it's every year. Um, I like to say it's, it's like your Kiwi Saver or your credit card. You know, it's cumulative. It sneaks up on you. Um, and, and we're now going... Beyond, beyond the research farm, we're looking for low-cost ways to measure many animals so as we can take it out to the national flock and, and have a real impact. With, with, with the key objective is, is an accountable, measurable method to reduce emissions that's attributable at the farm gate. <laughs>